So uh, real quick, just if you don't know, and I, I say this all the time, but uh, we do live stream this. So if, you know, uh, anytime you want to have a look at this school or class that we do, you're more than welcome to stay home, jump online, and uh, I mean, you don't get the goodies and you don't get to hang out with me, but uh, it's still, you know, you still get a little something and you, and you uh, can do it at the privacy of your own home, so it's good. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, here we have uh, people online I just want to introduce. So we have uh, Davida Redmond, we got John by Biasi, John Van Hoos, Lisa Ryan, Mark Hickok, um, Natalie E., Randy St. John, Rodney Knight, Thomas Scholler, and Warren White. So thank you. Appreciate you guys being online with us. Um, and thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Bill Watson. I'm the service manager here at Presidential Pools. And we just uh, started this pool school a couple of years ago. It's uh, We do uh, one pool class uh, the last Saturday of every month. And uh, it's been real fun. It's been great uh, just to kind of give you guys a raw information of the pool business because I know when we install the pool equipment, there's a, nowadays there's a lot to learn. Uh, there's a lot to know. So uh, we just wanted to do this just so we can kind of teach you a few things. And um, I kind of give it to you as raw as possible. You know, I'm not uh, a stand-up speaker. I just simply uh, been in the business for almost 18 years now. And I try to give you the you know, most layman uh, scenario that I can just so you understand it the best way because there's so much to learn, there's so much to know, especially with water chemistry. So I'm going to just go over the water chemistry with the basics. Uh, if you have any questions, happy to get with me either during the class or after the class and uh, I'll try to answer every question and make it just as fun and as easy as possible for you. So um, this is Andrew here. Um, definitely my right hand man. He's kind of the brains of the operation, so he keeps things moving and going for us. So I just wanted to introduce Andrew because he's a vital part of our department and uh, company. So um, what I'd like to do first and foremost, let's just go over the general basics of water chemistry. Um, now the biggest thing I wanted to explain to everybody uh, up front is there's generally three scenarios uh, or three um, uh, general basic scenarios for water chemistry, okay? So generally you have a standard which is just good normal operating water levels and that's good pH, good alkalinity, uh, and, and good chlorine and so forth. And then you have a condition which is called a corrosive uh, state. And, and this corrosive state is a low alkalinity, a low pH scenario and that's very aggressive to the interior in the pool very aggressive to the parts, the, the working parts that are, no problem, come on in, the working parts that are in the um, equipment. So for example, when you have a very low pH or low alkalinity, that water is corrosive. That's going to break down metals. That's going to uh, break down the seals and the pumps and so forth. So you've got to be very, very careful with corrosive water. And then on the other side of it, uh, you have what's called scaling. Uh, and scaling is basically what most of us uh, are in. Um, and basically what you see with scaling is a high pH, a high alkalinity, and a high calcium hardness. So therefore you get buildup uh, on the interior. The interior starts to feel a little bit more rough than it used to when it first came in. Um, you start to get buildup around the waterline tile. Um, you get buildup on the salt systems. Uh, the salt systems get calcified and they get built up on them. And that's basically what's called a scaling form. So you have three forms of water. You know, ideal, good water. You have the corrosive water, which are low uh, pH, low alkalinity. Then you have the scaling water, which is a high pH, high alkalinity, and so forth. So ideally, we want to be in the middle. We want to have this good, nice, true, ideal range of water. So that's really the biggest scenario here. So we've got a couple uh, tools to help you guys maintain that and then I'm going to kind of go over each chemical level to help you understand how to adjust that. Now in Arizona we primarily have a high pH and a high alkalinity scenario because of the high temperatures. So what happens is uh, obviously in Arizona we're very high temperature so naturally especially with a salt pool the pH tends to rise okay so the biggest thing you have to do as a pool owner is make sure that you're adjusting the pH 
um, I would like to say twice a week if possible. Now, the trouble with that is we're all busy and we have better things to do than keep an eye on our pool water, but the fact of the matter is, is if you want to maintain an ideal range of, of your uh, water chemistry, it's something that you've got to check absolutely at least once a week. Twice a week you're going to be that much more uh, better as far as controlling the water, and if you could do it three times a week, then that's, that's even better. So let's just quickly go over pH. Uh, the P, now, now here's the first thing is, before I get going any farther, the biggest thing that everybody in the pool business uh, and, and as a customer as well is you look at it and go, what's the most important chemical for my pool? Well, we all think chlorine is, right? Because chlorine, uh, free chlorine, basically keeps our pool looking good. But just because the water looks good doesn't necessarily that means that it is good, okay? It's just like, um, you know, just because it's clear water doesn't necessarily mean that that water is balanced, you know what I mean? It's just like people say, you know, oh, well, it's like a creek that's running down. It looks clear. Drink that water. You're fine. Well, that's false, you know what I mean? That could be, you could have a deer upstream. No? No deer upstream? No? Anyway, um... The fact of the matter is, is you just got to be careful of what the water is. So just because the water is crystal clear does not mean that it's not aggressive or it's not corrosive and it's damaging equipment and your interior. So uh, pH is the biggest, most important uh, chemistry level that I could recommend for you to keep an eye on. And basically uh, to raise, or let's give you the ideal. So the ideal pH is 7.2 to 7.8. Now that's the ideal range. What I would say I would like you to sit right around is probably in the 7.2 to 7.6 range because 7.8 is the high part of the pH. So basically once you kind of get to that level, you want to already start to adjust because you know right at around the 7.8 level, it's going to be out of range very quickly. So you know you kind of want to make the adjustment right away. So your ideal range from me to you would be 7.2 to 7.6 where 7.8 is still good, but it's starting to be in the high range. So 7.2 to 7.6 on the pH. Um, so how to adjust pH? Uh, you're going to use two chemicals. One is going to be called muriatic acid, and muriatic acid lowers pH. Okay. Um, if you ever need to raise pH, you would use what's called soda ash. Now, the, the, the thing about soda ash is primarily most of our pools are going to be in a high pH condition, so you're not necessarily going to need to go out and buy soda ash. The only time you'll ever use soda ash is if the pH is low and it's staying low. Because normally once you put the acid in, it'll go down, and then before you know it, it'll start to go right back up. But just be very careful. Before you add acid in the pool, always test. Um, the biggest thing that I see is people get accustomed to adding a chemical to their pool because for the first six months, they go, well, I've needed to add acid. I should just add acid again. Um, the biggest scenario behind that is then you get, if you don't check your pH, you get used to putting a chemical in. If that chemical's adjusting something, but the chemical level is not going back up. So, for example, you're used to putting muriatic acid in your pool. That lowers your pH, right? So what happens is, is naturally that pH we think is going to go back up. But sometimes it doesn't. It stays in that level. So if you come back in the next week and you just add your acid without checking it, right, now your pH is going down, down, down. And then eventually what happens is we get what's in the corrosive state. Next thing you know, you start to lose pebble on the wall of your pool. Um, it's the, you know, things are starting to break down, like the metals and the heat exchangers and heaters are starting to uh, rust and corrode and stuff like that. So be very, very careful before you add any chemicals to the pool. Always check first, then make the adjustment, okay? So um, muriatic acid to lower the pH. The, the biggest thing for me to you is uh, try to buy your muriatic acid from presidential pools first, uh, of course, but anywhere really. Uh, the biggest thing I want to uh, come across to you is uh, just check the percentage of the hydrochloric acid. Basically, you should be generally in the at least 20% and above. What I mean by that is if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, sometimes you'll catch like an 18%, right? So um, the, the scenario behind that is you're going to end up putting in more to adjust your pH. So you're better off going to a pool supply store 
either a presidential pool store here uh, and or any pool supply store because their acid holds a higher uh, value or higher acidic level. So you're going to use less to lower the pH. Does that make sense? So you can buy more and just use more, you know what I mean? But if for me to you, buy your stuff at a good pool supply store, you're going to get a higher concentrate of that muriatic acid. It's going to adjust the pH faster for you, and you're just going to use less of it. So it's definitely a good scenario to do. Come on in. Um, so that's pH. And then you have uh, soda ash to raise pH. That's just a, another chemical that will raise the pH up, and basically um, it'll affect the pH. But again, um, if you're in a low pH scenario, um, definitely get, uh, get that pH adjusted in the proper level and then keep an eye on it from there, okay? Any questions with pH so far? Uh, alkalinity is the next uh, best um, test that you want to test for. And the reason I say uh, about alkalinity, alkalinity is technically, I call a cousin of pH, okay? If you can keep your alkalinity between 80 and 120, uh, basically what that'll allow, uh, to, what, what that'll do for the pH is it won't allow the pH to bounce around as much. What I mean by that is if the alkalinity is stable and it's in between that 80 and 120, you're going to have a gentle rise, a gentle rise of pH, okay? If your alkalinity is low or your alkalinity is too high, then your pH is going to bounce around a lot more, so then you're going to technically be using more chemicals to adjust your pH, okay? So it's crucial to keep your alkalinity between 80 and 120. Um, now, alkalinity and your pH will naturally rise together, okay? And now here's kind of this tricky scenario you got to be very careful of. So your pH and alkalinity are going to rise together. You're going to be putting in your muriatic acid because muriatic acid lowers alkalinity and pH together. So what happens is you put your muriatic acid in the water, both of those chemical levels come down to the normal range, right? And then naturally they both raise up together. You put the muriatic acid in the pool, they lower together. So you have this case scenario happening on most pools. Now, there's, there's some of your pools um, that you will notice that it will lower both, and then only the pH will rise, okay? So here's the condition where you got to be careful because as you're putting the acid in, your pH is lowering, but now your alkalinity is lowering even more out of the range. Does that make sense? So normally they're kind of up together. You put the acid in, they go down together. But every now and then, just the pH will raise and the alkalinity will stay still. Okay, so be careful with that because as you put the acid in, the alkalinity is now lowering down, okay? And then eventually you're getting into that corrosive range with the low alkalinity. And this is where uh, what's called sodium bicarbonate comes in. Sodium bicarbonate uh, is the same thing as baking soda, and, and baking soda will raise your pH, or I'm sorry, your alkalinity, okay? So if you ever get a low alkalinity scenario, Good old-fashioned bacon. Uh, Costco now has the big bacon soda boxes, and on the back they have an actual pool thing to where it'll tell you how much bacon soda to add to adjust your alkalinity. So it's kind of cool. It's a lot cheaper as well. Um, so if you can get bacon soda over sodium bicarb, it's a heck of a lot cheaper, and it'll do the exact same thing. Okay. Um, so just be careful. So as you can see, when you're testing, it's crucial to know what you're testing and what you're adjusting for because if you make an adjustment without testing, you really are shooting in the dark. You don't know if you're going to make your water corrosive. You don't know if you're making your water a scaling scenario. Okay. Uh, like I said, corrosive water is definitely bad because it's going to deteriorate interiors and it's going to deteriorate metals, especially heaters. Uh, we get customers calling up and they go, Bill, you know, my heater's leaking. We go out there and basically the water has been so aggressive, it's eaten a hole through the copper tubing. You know what I mean? That's how aggressive water can be. It's amazing. It, it's really amazing. But that's the scenario. And that's why water chemistry is so crucial to keep an eye on. Um, if you can test twice a week, I'm telling you, you'll be ahead of the game. If, if you can do once a week, at least you're testing and at least you're making the adjustment. But what you'll find in Arizona because of the temperature, you know, you test on a Monday, let's say, and you adjust your chemicals. By Wednesday, Thursday, those chemicals are already starting to get out of balance. So, like I said, you know, the more frequent you can test, the better off your pool is going to be. All right? Any questions with pH? Okay, so acid to lower it, 
soda ash to raise it, alkalinity, acid to lower it, uh, sodium bicarb, or baking soda to raise it, okay? Um, chlorine. So uh, do most of, you, most of you guys have a salt system, salt cell here, just like so? Anybody on the tablets? The, so you're on the tablets, you got the floater, and then you got the floater in the back? Dechlor. Okay, so same scenario. So for you with the Dechlor and the tablet system is you guys are going to add the tablets to create your free chlorine to kill the algae. Um, now the biggest thing that I see is you get accustomed to adding tablets in your pool. Like just, hey, th it needs to have three a week. The next thing you know, as it starts to cool down, you don't know you no longer need to use that much tabs and that much chlorine because the algae is not growing. The water is getting less. You're swimming less. You don't have animals swimming anymore, um, and so therefore you don't need as much. So, for you guys with the tablets, it's a cost. You know what I mean? Those tablets aren't cheap. So uh, definitely monitor your chlorine and make sure your chlorine level is adjusted for the season. So your chlorine level generally should be 1.0 to 3.0 as a norm. Uh, in Arizona, I would say you would need to hold at least a 2.0 um, of free chlorine at all times um, because it just takes very short amount of time to go from good chlorine to no chlorine because of the high temperatures, uh, the demand uh, of the water, and you're swimming a lot more. So then you're soaking up a lot of more of that free chlorine. Okay, so uh, with tablets, you're going to add more tablets. With a chlorinator, a salt chlorinator, you would just simply increase the chlorine uh, percentage to give you more free chlorine to fight the algae scenario that's, that's getting promoted in the pool. Okay, uh, if you're low free chlorine, you ever, any, anybody heard the, the, the term shocking in your pool? Let me explain what shocking is. Shocking a pool is basically taking water that is zero free chlorine and making it 12 point uh, parts per million from zero to 12 point parts per million of chlorine within a 12 hour period, 10 to 12 uh, uh, hour period. And so basically you're taking that standard non-chlorinated water and you're really high chlorinating that water, okay? The, the key behind it is, is you should never need to shock your pool. People come to me and go, Bill, I shock my pool like once a month. I go, well, why? Well, it's because you've allowed that chlorine to go down to nothing, right? So what the goal is here is you guys want to make sure that you're testing uh, your water, okay, weekly, and that you're adjusting. Your, so you guys would be adding tablets into your floater and your feeder. Uh, for you with a salt system, you'd be increasing your chlorine level, okay? Because you always want to make sure every time you test, you have at least a 2.0 of free chlorine. So if you're below 2.0, add more tablets, and or increase the salt system. If you're above 3.0, less tablets, less percentage of the chlorine on the salt cell, okay? So as you increase the percentage, you get more chlorine. As you decrease the percentage, you get less chlorine, okay? It's just that simple. The biggest thing about, as far as the, you know, the cost of the tabs and the cost of the salt cell, the more you make the adjustments, uh, the better it is because you're going to save money and you're not going to over chlorinate the pool. So always make the adjustments on the salt cell as much as possible. You know, as now it's starting to cool off, you know, so if you're at 80% on your chlorinator, take 10% off, you know what I mean? And you'll start to see that chlorine going down and down and down. The biggest thing I see is people don't make adjustments with their tabs and they don't make adjustments with their chlorinator. And then in the winter, they have this chlorine that's 10 you know what I mean? It's just through the roof, and what's happening is you're over uh, paying for the tabs because you're keeping putting them in, and you're overworking the salt cell because the salt cell doesn't need to work that hard anymore because there's no one swimming and there's no algae in the water. You know what I mean? So always try and make that adjustment as much as possible. All right? Any questions so far? With that teleporter on your on your phone, you know? Yeah. What's the lowest you think we should go? Like 70 percent? All on the test. So, for example, you test your water, you look at your chlorine, do you have good chlorine? If you do, leave it right there. If you have too high a chlorine, it's above 3.0, down 10%, let it run a couple days, test it again. You know what I mean? And you'll make that adjustment. Some people have to actually unplug the cell or turn the cell off because it just you don't need that chlorine. I just hate to see a pool that's heavily chlorinated 
but it's not being used. You know what I mean? It's worth it if you're swimming because you're killing algae, but the biggest thing is, is like right now, probably half of this room are still swimming. You know what I mean? If that, right? I'm done swimming, so there's no sense in my pool to have all this chlorine because there's no one swimming in it. It's cold water, so there's no growth. There's no algae that's going to be promoted, and the temperatures are going down. We're under 100 now. You know what I mean? So things are changing, so we got to be... Uh, we got to make the adjustments, you know what I mean? So that's the biggest thing there. Um, so the next thing is, uh, which is the toughest problem we have in Arizona as pool owners, is calcium hardness, okay? What calcium hardness is, is just the, the factor of hard water. And we all see it in the dishwashers and on the shower doors and so forth. And it's just minerals that are uh, out of solution, that build up on your pool tile, build up on the salt cells and so forth. So calcium hardness should be between 200 and 400 parts per million, okay? The problem with Arizona and the hard calcium is, is we have a high evaporation rate, okay? So every day in the summer, uh, you're generally almost a half of an inch of evaporation. In the month of June and July, you're almost one foot of water evaporation uh, amount in one month. I mean, that's amazing. So if you turned your water leveler off for one month, you would lose almost a foot of water in your pool. You know, you don't realize that because every day you're evaporating water and the pool fill is refilling your pool for you. So you don't notice that, you know. But it's a considerable amount of water. Can you imagine a half inch of your entire pool surface is evaporating away every day? That's an amazing amount of water. So what happens is, if your water calcium hardness is between 200 and 400, when that water evaporates away, the minerals evaporate with it, okay? If your water is above 400 calcium hardness, right, what starts to happen now is when the, the water is evaporating, the minerals stay behind, okay? So then they start to build up. As the calcium hardness builds up, you start to see the buildup on the tile, okay? You start to see the buildup. Uh, anybody have a salt system and you see the flakes and the buildup? It looks like a snow cone at some point, you know what I mean? But basically that's hard water building up on here, okay? And it's hard water that builds up on the surface, and that's what creates that scaling, that rough plaster, you know? When you feel plaster when it's first done, it's baby smooth, you know? As you start to scale the pool, which is the high alkalinity, the high pH, and the high calcium hardness, now that surface isn't as smooth anymore. It's a little rougher than it used to be. You know, the salt cell gets built up. The filters get built up. So that's where that scenario comes in. So the biggest fix for this is to uh, periodically drain the water out of your pool, okay? Um, in, in Arizona, I would say if you're a pool owner, drain your pool completely about every two years. It's a minimum because you can't control calcium hardness because it's so high evaporation and it's building up so fast, um, you need to either periodically drain the pool or you need to just completely drain the pool and then fill it back up and start fresh, right? So here's the scenario. If you want to monitor and keep the calcium from forming, see most pool people say, well, if you own a pool, you're going to have a ring around the tile. Well, it's true because none of us have the time to really micromanage the chemistry levels, right? But if you did, if you kept your pH and alkalinity in check and you keep your calcium hardness in check, you would never see that calcium line. It's just hard to do in this state because of the high heat, okay, and the high evaporation. That's why it's so tough and it's such a demand on us to, to do. But if you want to, what I highly recommend is get a calcium hardness tester, okay, which, which this little aqua check has that on here. So it will give you the ballpark of where you're going to be guarantee your water's hard right away and you're going to have high uh, calcium hardness. So for you, uh, on your pool equipment, you have the hose bib, little blue handle hose bib. All you do is hook your garden hose to that hose bib, run your hose out to the front or backyard, uh, however you want to run the water. You simply turn your pump on high speed or low speed, however you want to do it, and, and turn that open and that's going to alleviate some water out of the pool. Okay, so now just let an inch, inch of water go down, you know what I mean? Turn it off, let the fill refill the pool, and that's going to lower the calcium hardness. Even though the water that's coming in is hard, it's just not a compounded, compressed amount. 
So basically, over time, that calcium hardness will go down and get back into the 200 to 400 level. The problem behind it is you got to do it periodically, and you're going to be on it all the time. That's the problem. And we all have better and bigger things to do than draining water out of our pool. But the fact is, is if you can do it and you can maintain it, it'll help uh, the pool, and you won't get that buildup on the tile. It's just tough to do. Okay, so. Um, period. You just want to. The best thing to do is check your water. If it's hard and it's over the 400, then you want to start to periodically drain. Okay, or you can simply drain the pool. Uh, you know, a big thing for me to you is you'll kind of know when things are out of line because you before you just added a cup of this and change this and now you're adding two cups and you're making more adjustments and now it's three cups you're putting in so you're starting to compile and compress all this chemical to keep this water balanced where it's for me to you it's a heck of a lot cheaper drain the pool completely refresh with fresh water cost you 50 bucks instead of a hundred bucks in chemicals to fight this scenario it cost you 50 bucks to drain the pool and refill the pool and, and you're back in business so I highly recommend draining your pool completely uh, uh, at least every two years okay no 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 you don't have to ask to wash a pool at, at all um, simply just draining and refilling you could do and it's I think it's cheaper to do it you know because you, what you're going to spend in the chemistry level to consistently battle this pool like the biggest scenario is for the first six to eight months of a pool ownership it's kind of great you know the pool's perfect it's clean it's crystal clear and then over time things start to happen with the water and it falls out of balance so now you're starting to add more chlorine and more acid and then you're starting to go buy this stuff to keep things balanced you know what I mean it's better to just drain the pool fill it right back up and start fresh yeah, you got to put your salt back in. That's what I'm saying. If you drain a little bit at a time, you can still accomplish the same scenario, but you won't lose all your water chemistry. You know, now with with draining water, you're going to lose sodium for sure, and you're going to use sta you're going to lose your stabilizer. All right, and I'm going to go over stabilizer right now for you. But there is some advantages and disadvantages to draining water. When you drain water, you lose water chemistry, but you're also affecting and you're losing that hardness water, which you want out. So it's kind of a give and take, you know what I mean? But it's more beneficial to you to get that hard water out and put fresh water in and add your salt again and keep things balanced. It'll be a lot easier to keep things balanced that way. Yeah, we do a drain. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. We do a drain and restart, chemical restart, 165 for non-salt and 225 for salt. But it's not a bad deal because we come out, we drain your water for you, two days later we come back and put all the chemicals back in for you. So it's kind of, if you want to do it yourself, you could probably, you know, get it for a little cheaper, but the fact is then you got to go rent a pump and all that jazz, run the hose yourself, totally up to you. Um, yeah, right into the city sewer. Yep. Um, 165 not a bad price you know what I mean going to Home Depot and renting something yeah exactly yeah yeah be careful where you run the hose too because you don't want it going down to the neighbor's house you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah right so the moral of the story here really is if you test your pool water the more frequently you test it the easier it's going to be the less amounts you're going to have to put in you know what I mean but the problem is is we're all busy and we test it we or we forget and we go oh let's see what this water looks like you know now we're going oh man I'm way high and we start to add all these chemicals to adjust it you know so it's a it's a it's definitely beneficial to test more and, and more periodic um, for you with the tablets okay the one thing you guys got to keep an eye out for um, it's called stabilizer now everything uh, there's three names for it there's cyanuric acid conditioner or stabilizer pretty much the same exact thing now for a salt system you need to have a stabilizer level of 60 to 80 now what stabilizer does is it helps hold the free chlorine in the pool longer okay and it kinda keeps a uh, block or a guard on this free chlorine so it can kill the algae and and basically sanitize the pool properly with no stabilizer, the free chlorine that's being produced through the tablets or the salt system, that chlorine is only hanging around for a very brief period of time. So 
basically what happens is you have now algae problems because the chlorine's not hanging around very long, and you have uh, you know unsanitized water because that chlorine is only being introduced for a short period of time, but it's not hanging in very long, so it's just getting dissipated out or it's getting burned off. So you have to have stabilizer in the water. Okay. Now the reason I say it's more important for you tablet people is because the tablets generally hold 60% stabilizer. Uh, the rest is called trichlor, chlorine. So each time you're putting these tabs in your pool, your stabilizer raises up and up and up and up, okay? Which is good condition until you get around the 120, 130 mark. Okay, so with a salt system, stabilizer is pretty much where you should be, 60 to 80. You don't have to worry about it going up because there's nothing getting added because you're not putting stabilizer in. But the tablets, you're putting in stabilizer every time you put a tablet in your pool. Okay, so just make sure eventually over time the tablets, you're going to go, you know what, I, I'm used to put two tablets in a week. Now I'm putting four in. Now I'm putting five in. What's, what's going on here? What's happening is it's called a, a, a stabilizer lockout. Once that stabilizer gets into the 120 range and above, then it actually blocks the free chlorine from doing its job that it's trying to do. So draining your water, it'd be something that you guys would want to do. You would drain the water down, get the stabilizer into the 30, 50, 30 to 50 for you guys with the tablets, 60 to 80 with a salt system. Different, different levels for different pools. The reason I say 30 to 50 is because you want to be at the low end because as you're putting the tabs in, it's going to go up. You know what I mean? So start low gives you more time before you have to drain. Does that make sense to you guys? I'm not draining a little bit. Yeah, a little bit at a time or completely draining the whole pool. Totally up to you. But you can drain the state. You can remove stabilizer by draining a little bit at a time. You know what I mean? Get that stabilizer down. So the, the reason I say 30 to 50 is it's just beneficial for you because it, it's putting stabilizer in so you don't have to worry about it as much. The problem is, is as you put those in, it raises up and raises up and then it creates a problem for you. So just keep an eye on the stabilizer level with tablets. With a salt chlorinator, you don't need to, uh, but I do recommend checking your stabilizer. And if the stabilizer is below 60, I highly recommend with a salt system, you get your stabilizer between 60 and 80 and things will work a lot better for you. Yeah, pretty much the same uh, the where you buy it. Now, again, you should never lose stabilizer, okay? So once you have cyanuric acid slash stabilizer in your water, it should never lose unless you're draining, you got a good cannonball contest, or you've got a leak in the pool, okay? So that's something to, to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, any test like this, um, this is, this is a, a seven-way test. And basically, it'll give you just about every test you're looking for. If you're really into testing your water and you see the, the good thing about these, I like to use these, is these are ballpark. You know, this is going to tell you you're in the ballpark. You know what I mean? But if you're really uh, accustomed to knowing exactly what your pH is and exactly what your chlorine level is and alkalinity, get yourself a little drop test kit. Um, a little bit more to it. You got to fill the vial, you got to drop the drops in give it a shake and kind of color match it. Um, but this will tell you, hey, your alkalinity is 80. You know what I mean? Like show yeah, it'll tell you. This will say, well, it's in the 80 range. You know what I mean? So it's kind of up to you. So if you really want to be dialed in, get yourself a little drop test kit. But from me to you is, don't spend 15, 20 bucks on this test kit. I'd spend 40 bucks and get you what's called a Taylor test kit. Taylor test kit gives you from A to Z, it'll test every little thing, and it also comes with some cool little uh, informational things in the test kit that really can uh, help you adjust that chemical level. There is, there's a ton of them. Just a standard Taylor test kit, and you just want pH, alkalinity, free chlorine, stabilizer, calcium hardness. Just one that tests generally all the, the general levels. Um, it's worth it. I, I know they're about 40, 50 bucks. Amazon, it, you know what I mean? They're probably pretty cheap. Um, but the cool thing about it is it actually gives you, when you test your alkalinity, it's going to say, hey, your alkalinity is 90. You know what I mean? Rather than, oh, it looks all right, you know what I mean, type of thing. So uh, if you really want to keep things in check, definitely uh, purchase a, a, a drop test kit. And then the cool thing about the test kit is you can get 
Amazon online, you can get these refilled. So you, you don't have to rebuy a new test when these are gone. You just buy your new little reagent and you're back to normal. So it's kind of cool. What about electric? You splash a lot of water out of your hot tub that's connected to your pool or the pool itself? Nothing wrong. Does that change your, you know, have a salt cell, does that change your uh, stabilizer? It will because you're losing water. But then I have to add it. Yeah, then you have to add it. But, I mean, you'd really have to lose a lot of water to really make an, a, an adjustment. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, just keep an eye on that. You're good. And then with tabs, you know, again, just keep an eye on the the stabilizer level. Keep a keep a close eye on that. Um, and other than that, we're good to go. One thing I would recommend for you guys, you have the deck core, so keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you have the floater, little floater, uh, about twenty two, twenty four bucks on Amazon. They're called Sunken Treasure. I have one in my pool. It pops open. You put three tabs in it closes back up, toss it, it actually falls to the bottom of the pool, so it chlorinates from bottom up. Uh, so most of your UV rays from the sun, your chlorine's up here, it's attacking your chlorine. When, you dro when it drops to the bottom, it secretes the chlorine from bottom up, right? And then the cool thing is when the tabs are gone, it floats. Cool, cool thing to do. I have it in my pool. It actually saves me a little bit of uh, chlorine tabs, and uh, it works really well. So, cool little thing. Amazon, the way to do it. And I don't think I've, or, I don't go to the store for anything anymore. It's all Amazon. It's terrible. Um, any questions so far with stabilizer? So we're all good there. Um, so yeah, the calcium harness. So the biggest thing is is keep the pH uh, in check. Again, seven two to seven six. Uh, add muriatic acid. Um, I highly recommend twice a week if possible. You will be able to keep your pH in check a lot easier at twice a week. Um, the question most people ask is how much to add? Well here's the best scenario is, is one, there's a hundred ways and hundred uh, you know applications and stuff and I'm going to show you a cool application here soon but there's a, a, a bunch of calculators, chemical calculators in on, online that you can do. Uh, the best case scenario for me to you is start small, a cup of acid, and see what that adjustment does for you. So what I'm saying is, is you check your pH, you add a cup of acid, two days later, check it again and say, okay, it was 8.0, I put a cup in and now it's 7.8, you kind of know it's giving you a, you know, a 0.2 uh, decrease. So now you know two caps of, cups of acid will drop you down at 0.2 again. You know what I mean? So it gives you a ballpark. Um, or you can simply go onto these calculators, punch in uh, your gallons, your total gallons of your pool. You can tell it, hey, my pH is 7.8. It'll say, hey, add 3.4 cups of muriatic acid, and then you can go from there. Okay? With, uh, we have a heater for our pool. Yes. So we're going to get a blanket to help it a little yep. bit. Is that going to fluctuate the uh, chemical level? Like, will it Not really. Will it faster? No, no, no. Um, the biggest thing about algae is it needs warm water, right? And it needs no chlorine. I mean, that's the, that's the two growths that it needs. It needs hot water, warm hot water, and it needs no chlorine to fight it, right? Um, so that's a breeding ground. So the warmer the water, the more scenario you have for algae, right? Now, the one thing I r highly recommend with a cover, you evaporate less, right? Um, you'd think you would evaporate more because the water is warmer, but you actually evaporate a little less. Now, the biggest thing from, from me to you is every now and then, peel the cover off, let the pool run, and kind of air out a little bit. You know, kind of run a little bit and then recover it. See, some people cover it and they'll leave it like that all the time, and I don't think it's good for a pool. I think a pool needs to evaporate properly, and I think it needs to breathe properly. Sounds kind of weird, but it does. Um, peel the cover off, let it run a couple days, put your cover back on. Nothing wrong with having a cover, you know. Saves your heat uh, at night, you know what I mean, for loss and stuff like that. Put one on your spa, you know, that way if you want to heat your spa, buy a small one for the spa, it'll help hold that heat in so you won't lose it. So if you want to refire it the next night, for a weekend, you know, type thing, you know, so that way you can pop that cover on, you know, leave it in the spa mode, let's say, and you won't burn off all your heat at night. It's amazing, Arizona, right? I mean, a week ago we were sweating bullets and now it's kind of cold. You know what I mean? It's like, what's going on? It's, it's kind of a weird state. Um, any questions so far? We cool so far? Um, am I losing anybody? You want me to go over anything again? But again, the more frequent you test your uh, water, the better you're going to be in. Drain your water. I'm telling you, drain your water. It's worth the money to do it. 
about every two years. Um, and if you start to see your chemicals getting out of whack, do the periodic drain. Don't be afraid to run the hose out to the front yard and drain a little water off. Fellas, don't start it and sit down and watch a football game because before you know it, your pool will be way down and you'll have problems. Um, the, the reason I say an inch at a time is if you, dr you can drain it as much as you want. You could drain the pool through your equipment damn near down to nothing. The problem is it is that you'll have to start adjusting valves, okay? Because remember, when the pump turns on, it's pulling from the skimmer at the top of the pool and the drain at the bottom of the pool, right? So once your water gets below that skimmer, that pump's not going to be able to prime anymore. So the pump will lose prime and then the water will stop. So just by taking an inch, your pool won't see that. You know what I mean? It won't it won't affect won't affect the pump and it won't affect anything. So just take an inch or so down, turn the pump off, shut the hose bib, let the pool fill up normal, and then you can redo it again. A couple times a week. Okay? Any questions so far? Yeah, so shocking a pool, right, is basically taking a pool from zero free chlorine, which is stagnant, non-chlorinated water, and you're increasing it to a standard of uh, 10 parts per million, 10 to 12 parts per million for a 12-hour period. That's really kind of super sanitizing the pool. The biggest scenario is, is you should never allow your chlorine to go to zero. And if it does, then you need to figure out, is it the salt chlorinator that's not producing as much, am I not putting in as many tabs as I'm supposed to, and or is there another issue behind why my chlorine is not affecting the pool properly, okay? So um, you never need to shock because you want to be ahead of the game by making sure you have free chlorine in the pool every time you test, you know what I mean? Right. Now. Yeah, now that's something where, okay, you've had this big party and everybody's in the pool and they're soaking up all that free chlorine. Now, I think it's a great idea to either high, you know, hike your chlorinator up a, a little high for a couple days to produce a little bit more free chlorine. You could use a little liquid chlorine, you know what I mean, if you wanted to, to kind of give the pool that little bit of free chlorine again. But again, people run out to these stores and they buy shock and algae and this and that, and you don't need that, you know what I mean? So if you want to adjust your chlorine a little bit because you've had this big party in the pool, a little liquid chlorine works well, um, or even a little shock packet if you want. But if you just let the pool do its thing and chlorinate like normal, it'll get right back to normal for you. So it's just one of those things. But if you want to add, uh, just for you guys, you can add liquid chlorine to a salt pool. It's the exact same. There's just different types of ways you can introduce chlorine to the water. One is liquid, one is from a salt cell, one is from the tablets, and then one is from a shock packets. You see what I mean? So they can interchange however you want. So if you have a salt pool, you could use tablets to chlorinate with it as a, as a combination. If you had a tablet pool, you can put liquid in. If you have a salt pool, you could put liquid chlorine in. So it's just the same scenario. Some people I've heard pour bleach in the water, you know, because it's a sanitizer and it'll help. It's just not as good as a liquid chlorine is. Okay, so it's just different different types of doing that. So uh, yep. Don't need to shock ever. I never shock my pool. Now, I, I'm not going to tell you that I haven't tested my pool and go, whoa, I have zero chlorine. You know what I mean? Then I'm starting to go, hey, I need to put something in the pool. But the fact is, is if I did my job and tested and kept on my chlorine, I wouldn't have to jam something in my water because it wasn't there. You know what I mean? So the goal is, is if you're testing and you're keeping an eye on it, you kind of know, hey, my chlorine's getting low. Why is it getting low? Either I need more tabs or I need a higher percentage output on the cell you know, um, something in that case. Um, so I want to go over a couple things real quick. Has anybody heard of phosphates? Okay, so here's a big problem in Arizona. Um, let's say you're doing your thing like normal, you've got your tablets in your pool, your chlorinator, everything's been going well, and now all of a sudden you're testing your water and you have zero free chlorine, or very low free chlorine, right? And you're going, wait a second, I haven't just done anything. My salt cell is the same as it's always been. I'm putting tablets in your deck chlores and your floaters like normal. Everything's, nothing's changed. All of a sudden I have a depleted amount of chlorine. What's called phosphates. And phosphates are basically 
I, I call it algae food, right? It's, it promotes algae growth, right? And phosphates come from rain and dirt and, and storms, uh, landscape runoff, plants. Everybody's pool probably has a small form of phosphates in the pool. Now, phosphates levels should be as close to zero as possible. So what happens is you get a big dust storm or a dirt storm and your phosphates get increased, okay? So your phosphates levels are over, let's say, 500. And I, I, you start to see a problem right in the 300 to 500 range. Then what happens all of a sudden is you test in your free chlorine and you see your free chlorine is very low. So what happens is, is that phosphate, okay, is promoting algae. So the more algae is going in your pool, which you need more free chlorine to fight the algae. Does that make sense? So now your free chlorine is going down, right? Because you're fighting something that wasn't there before. So now then you go, okay, well, I need more chlorine. So then you start dumping in more tablets and you're hiking up this chlorinating and you're putting in all these chemicals to fight this scenario where you'd be better off just testing for phosphates, go to a pool supply store, either our store up front here or any pool supply store and ask them to test your phosphate level. Okay, this is only a condition that all of a sudden you have a very you're you're trying you're fighting a low chlorine problem when you know that the salt cells working properly you know that your tablets are good and everything's working properly and all of a sudden you're having a low free chlorine problem check your phosphates and then uh, if your phosphates are high you go get phos free or uh, a phosphate remover you pour that in the water it lowers the phosphates and now out comes your free chlorine back to normal, okay? So keep an eye on phosphates. I'm not gonna go into nitrates, but it's a total scenario, different scenario, but it's the same scenario where it can affect your chlorine residual, uh, but it's just too in depth. The nitrates are a different problem. You know, I, I think I, from me to you, I would only test if you're kind of seeing that low free chlorine. So let's say for a quick example for you guys, you're putting in three tablets a week, right? Let's just say. You're putting it in and the pool's looking fantastic. We have a storm and things happen and now you test your water and you go, you know what, it's a little low. You know, now you're starting to put three and maybe even four and it's still low. You're putting five in, you know what I mean? You're kind of gaining, you're trying to put more in to gain this chlorine, but the chlorine is still low. It's still hanging around low and it's not raising up properly. It's because something is starting to affect that free chlorine and that's when I would test for your phosphates. It's always good too every now and then just to go take a water sample, go into the pool supply store. We Again, we have one here, a uh, water testing system here, um, but it's also good to kind of just get that secondary test, you know what I mean? See what they're testing for and it'll uh, help you out. Unless you have like a Taylor test kit, then you can test for phosphates and so forth. Okay, so if you have a high phosphate, the only scenario you can do is simply get some phosphory and, and get it down. Um, one thing I would recommend is really keep an eye on the PPB, uh, which is parts per billion, um, because you'll buy a $30 bottle that'll uh, treat you know a certain amount of PPB, and then you'll buy a cheaper bottle, and it's twice as strong as the more expensive bottle. So just be careful of what you're buying with that phosphate stuff. No, exactly. Like we, uh... Yep, perfect. Yeah. Yep. Probably won't change the pH level much. Okay. No. Um, the only thing that will affect pH is liquid chlorine. Liquid chlorine is about uh, a 12, 12 to 15 uh, parts per million in pH. So it na it wants to naturally raise pH. Liquid chlorine does. Sodium. Salt pools tend to see have a high pH over a non-salt pool. So there's some disadvantages with having salt, and there's some advantages with having salt. Um, but for you guys, drive that pH down or the phosphates down as much as possible, and you'll see that the, the free, as soon as it gets down to zero or close to zero, the free chlorine will just start to come back, and then life's back to normal. So but you get into that phosphate level, you know, I couldn't tell you. All, all I could tell you is a lot of times it's from storms and heavy rains and then next thing you know your things are starting to change a little bit just because of that and that's the phosphates 
Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you add chemicals, I highly recommend, especially muriatic acid, always add it kind of in the deep end, not above your steps or bench because muriatic acid is heavier than water and it'll fall right to the floor. Um, and then just anytime you add chemicals, kick the pump on high speed, let it really circulate the pool really good and then put your chemicals in and let it do its thing. Phosphate um, stuff, I would probably recommend going straight into the skimmer um, because it'll really get that. Uh, the biggest probably breeding ground for algae is your filter, okay, because it's sitting stagnant in the sun, you know what I mean? It's full halfway with water um, and it's just stagnant water sitting there. It's a perfect breeding ground for algae. So uh, phosphate, drop it in the skimmer, let it run through that filter really good, get back to the pool on high speed, yeah. And then you don't need to run it for long, just to kind of really mix that chemical up that you're doing, shut it down after an hour or so and back to normal, okay? Any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, Bill, uh, just before the class I asked you, uh, we're planning on drinking our pool uh, yeah. probably at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Uh, you said uh, five bags every 10,000 gallons. Uh, every one bag, one 40 pound bag of salt for every 2,000 gallons of water. And that'll, that, that should give you right in that right range of salt adding. Um, a, one 40 pound bag of uh, coarse salt to every 2,000 gallons of water. So if it's a 12,000 gallon, you'll be putting about six bags of salt in, 10,000, five bags, and so forth. You know, um, so here's a scenario. Some of your homes have the soft water loops, and some have soft and hard. So um, basically, most of your pools are filled with hard water, right? Uh, if yours is soft water, you've got a better scenario than most of us because it's softer water that's being put in the pool. The only problem with soft water is you're probably on pellets, the salt pellets. Oh, the granule. Okay, so you you may see a you know increase of using that because you're using that sodium to refill the pool. I don't know though. Are you guys running through a lot of that, or is it not too bad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's your scenario. So see how what's really tricky is having calcium hardness level if that's not in that right range. See, normally I don't talk about low calcium hardness because in Arizona it's hard right out of the gate and it's already starting to be high out of the range. You know what I mean? So you very rarely get that low scenario, that low uh, calcium hardness level. So just, you know, I'm glad we got that fixed for you. But just... The benefit of it that you guys have, though, is it'll it'll be a little less, you know, spiking. You'll kind of stay in that normal range uh, to some degree. Eventually, you know, it's going to get out of the range, and then you got to redrain the pool. But I would fill the pool up just with your normal tap water if it's salt. You know, the only trouble is is you're going to burn off some of your salt pellets or coarse salt in the thing, and that's just it's a good trade-off if you ask me, unless it becomes a real pocket eaten scenario, I would I would just keep it going. Is, for is sure. You just simply gallons? test the water. See the, the neat thing about yeah. sodium is you would think if you drain a pool halfway, you would think you're taking half of that sodium out. Well the fact is is sodium will stay in that water until you dilute the sodium with fresh water. So for example, the parts per million will stay in the water until you introduce the fresh water to mix with the sodium water, then the sodium lowers. Does that make sense? Um, I want to show you a really cool app. Um, it's called Arenda. And this is a cool little app. Um, let me give you this quick little video first. I think this is a super cool little calculator. And what this is for is uh, to basically set up uh, and input your uh, chemical levels and it'll tell you uh, and before we play that let me just tell you what this is it's LSI okay LSI is uh, Langlier saturation index and it's basically the sum of all your chemical levels and it will tell you if your water is balanced uh, aggressive or corrosive which is low or scaling which is high so remember you have that three bodies of water normal or ideal corrosive water which is low chemical levels 
scaling water, which is high chemical levels. And so this is what this LSI is real quick. Cool little thing, and uh, it'll help you out if you really want to help your uh, pool water chemistry out. Go ahead, Andrew. Hi, my name is Eric Knight with Arenda, and today I'm Everybody hear that all right? the Arenda mobile app. Really cool app. Let's get right into it. Let's go to the dosage calculator, and here's how you start. First, pick the calculator type, residential pool or commercial pool. There's no commercial pool, why not? Put in the quantity, 100,000 gallons, done. Now, the left side is your current chemistry, but make sure that the left side is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, especially if it's ugly. When you adjust the dials, the number at the bottom, saying LSI, changes. The objective is to get the number on the right side to be as close to 0, 0.0 as possible. If you're within the LSI range, the number will be green. If you're out of range, it's going to be red. If that's what comes out of your tap, minus 0.55, it's going to be etching plaster. So how do we correct for that? We move over to the right side and we adjust those dials and try to get the number at the bottom of the right side as close to zero as possible. So we can increase calcium, get that number a little closer to zero. Perfect. Click get dosage and here above the blue line it will tell you everything that you need to add to get from the left side to the right side. Below the blue line these are Arenda products. You may not use them. That's okay. But if you do, this is how you dose them. Our enzyme is CD600 or CD700. Our SC1000 scale and metal control for a startup, for example, you can use the purge dose. What we really like about the app is you can tap the envelope at the top right, and you can email the results with a date and timestamp. That way, you have a paper trail with a screenshot of exactly what you added to that pool. <coughs> this is really beneficial for a paper trail for customers to have, send it to the homeowner, send it to your boss, whoever it is, but put it down, log it, make sure you have that. That is how you use the Arenda dosing calculator app. Cool. So in a nutshell, what I like about it is with this app, it's a free app, it doesn't cost you anything, right? You test your water. On the left side, you simply scroll left to right and put that information in what's your pool. So for example, temperature outside. Now the temperature is going to be on your control panel, your easy touch remotes, the outdoor control panel, or your screen logic. It'll tell you exactly what the temperature of the water is when you turn the pump on. Okay, So you'd put that temperature in. The next one you test your chlorine level, just like normal, you would put that in, and then so forth and so on. At the, at the very bottom, okay, if the little dial at the bottom is green, your water's perfect. Okay, If it's not green, it's red, you go over to the right side and make the adjustment, and as you make the adjustment on the right side, it'll tell you exactly what to adjust, how much to adjust, and what chemical level to adjust to make your water ideal or normal, right? So it's a cool little app uh, that I highly recommend. I use it. Uh, we all use it. It's a great app. Um, yeah, they make their own products, but it's a cool little calculator to really tell you exactly what level to adjust. Now, the trouble with this is, is I want them to give you the ideal range because without you knowing what that range is, you don't know what to adjust, right? Um, so, so I would, I want them to do a little different, and hopefully they'll do that. But if not, you, you now have the ideal ranges of where you should be. So just know that if you're not in the ideal range, when you come over here and, and set that, once you put it in the ideal range at the very bottom, you should have the green. Okay? So it kind of says, hey, if I adjust my pH from 8.0 to 7.6, my little deal at the bottom went from red to green. That's all you need to do because you know once you've made that adjustment, your tab is green, it's telling you that your water is great or good or ideal, right? So a negative number is corrosive, a positive number is scaling, and then you want to be as close to zero as possible. Now I wouldn't worry about, you know, like on, on, on this thing it says, right now it's green and it says 0.02, you know what I mean? I wouldn't worry about it. If the tab is green, close enough. You know, I wouldn't really micromanage it because it'll probably drive you crazy. But uh, it's a cool little app. It's definitely beneficial, costs you nothing to do. And if you have some questions or how to get your pool water in check, 
make the adjustments on the left side, you're going to put in what your pool information is. On the right side, you can scroll back and forth with each chemical level and just see by moving this level, moving your pH, moving your alkalinity, makes the difference and change at the bottom. As soon as your tab is green, your chemical level is good, and now you know exactly how much to add and what to add and what to adjust. So it's a cool little, cool little feature. All right. Any questions so far? Anything you want me to go back over with you? I got a couple of questions. Sure. Um, is the pool not going to be used for three, four months out of the year? Is it better just to drain it? No. No, no, no. Keep the pool full okay. at all times. You never want to keep your pool drained. You know, now if it's a repair or something, you know, we, we, we keep an eye on your pool, but you never just want an empty pool just because. You always want to keep it full, especially why, in Arizona. Why is that? Um, just because the interior needs moisture uh, so it doesn't crack. Um, plus, you know, uh, just the temperatures on the interior, it's just to protect the interior more so than anything. Um, plus, an empty pool is dangerous, to be quite honest with you. People fall in them. You know, you'd be amazed how many people fall in a pool each year, um, especially an empty one. Um, so uh, it's just not a good thing to do. So I highly recommend. But the biggest thing I would love for everybody to do is make the adjustments. Adjust your schedules. Lower the schedules for the season. Raise the schedules for this, you know, the swim season. So the cooler it gets out, you know what I mean? Now you guys just start to take an hour off your run times. Take an hour, take another hour, take another hour. Save your money, you know what I mean? Because you don't need to run it as long. No one's swimming anymore. There's not algae that's growing and so forth, right? Um, adjust your tablets. Don't put as many tablets in your pool as, as you used to. Instead of doing three a week, do two a week, you know? Those tablets are expensive, I'm telling you. Those things are expensive. Um, so if you can save yourself a tablet a week, I mean, I know it's not much, but it'll, it'll help you. Um, and then with the salt chlorinators, don't have that 90% chlorinator going. You know what I mean? Drop it down 10%, 10%, 10%. Because remember, if there's no algae growing and no one's swimming, then there's no reason for that free chlorine to be used. So it's just compiling now. It's just building up. You don't want that, you know what I mean? You want to maintain that ideal level all year round. So increase in the summer, decrease in the winter. With, uh, like I was saying, ours is like 80 for the pool and 4 for the spa. Do I leave the spa alone? And just yeah, the, pool? The, the spa will adjust as you increase or decrease the pool. Now, it just because it have to set that up. See, you're mixing that water every day and away because it fills the spa back into the pool, right? So you don't really need to worry about that. It's They've set that up for that one person that wants to keep that spa heat for a week. You know what I mean? So that way when that pool's turning on, there's still a very small amount of free chlorine happening. You know? But uh, the biggest thing from me to you is to keep and, and, and uh, provide a, a healthy pool is clean your baskets, clean your filters. I know I say this all the time, but I'm telling you, 90% of problems out there stem from dirty filters and dirty baskets and unmaintenanced uh, equipment. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Um, so clean your filters, clean your baskets, clean your salt cells, um, and make the adjustments proper. Adjust your chemistry level as many times as possible. Test as many times as possible. But overall, just enjoy the pool. You know what I mean? I mean, that's the, that's the grand skinny of it. If you're enjoying your pool, and that's what we've paid for, and that's the reason you bought the pool. But if you really want to make it uh, a, an ideal state, uh, definitely keep an eye on the water chemistry. Just going to go over a quick few things for you. Um, yeah. Yes. No, not in Arizona. Um, water gets the, – the amazing thing is, right, is people go, there's no way it freezes in Arizona. It's, that's untrue. It does. It's been into the 20 degrees, you know what I mean, even lower up north. Um, one thing while you're talking about that as far as freezing, you don't need to change anything on your pool. Uh, water has got to be, it's got to be very cold outside to freeze water. Um, you all have what's called a freeze protection on your equipment. So if your pump turns on on a random time and it's cold outside uh, at 36 degrees, uh, as soon as that water sensor tests 36 degrees, it's going to kick on the pump. And I'm sorry, air temperature, not water. So at, once the air temperature gets to 36 degrees or below, it'll turn your pump on and circulate your water for a brief period of time until that uh, temperature changes. Okay. So if your pump kicks on 
uh, at some weird random, random time. It's not your neighbor playing with you. It's the freeze protection. Okay. Uh, one other thing is every home that you guys have, including mine and Andrew, we have two vac breakers. One vacuum breaker in the front of your home. It's a little um, deal that's got a couple valves next to it. Okay. A lot of them provide just the feed for your landscape boxes. Um, and then we put one on for your pool fill. It's a black top kind of brass. Uh, I highly recommend take a little cloth or a towel and put them over that. What happens is, is they're full of water, right? It's a brass housing. Brass is cool, water in the center, they freeze in, in, in the winter, okay? And they expand, it pops the thing, and then you gotta replace the entire thing, and they're about 150 bucks. The part is 150, and you're gonna spend 100 bucks to have somebody replace it. So a good old fashioned cloth or a towel, cover it. Uh, it's one is on the corner of your home, and one is in the back of your home where your water leveler is. You guys all know where that is. It's a little vac breaker, round black cap, brass body. Um, it's where the two valves are. Just wrap a towel around it. Fellas, don't be using the kitchen kitchen towels. The ladies will get after you for that. Use an old one. Um, so real quick, what I wanted to show you. I don't push anything. I hardly ever push products. I push one product, which is the uh, sunken treasure. I use that in my pool. This is uh, called an RX, cool little system, um, super easy. They're about 68 bucks. Um, they last about six months, twice a year scenario. This little basket, you simply take out of the wrapper, you drop it in your pump basket. Uh, you have two, some of you guys have two. You have the bigger black container with the blue basket. This can go right in there, or just a normal pump basket. This can drop right in the pump basket, okay? There's no maintenance to it, but what this does is, this is, secretes a chemical into the pool water. You don't see it, you don't smell it, you wouldn't even know it's there. But what it does is it helps kill bacteria in your pool water. And from me to you, I think it makes your water a little bit more crystal clear. Um, I think it helps sanitize your water. And overall, you will use less uh, output on the salt cells by a small degree and you'll use less tabs in your pool because this is breaking down bacteria for you so therefore you need less free chlorine to break down that uh, bacteria. Cool little uh, deal. I like it because I'm simple. You could drop it in your pump basket six months later over the shoulder in the garbage you pop a new one in. There's no maintenance to it whatsoever. Very cool little product. I have a Delta UV that's comparable to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This this is helpful. No, it's just it's an addition. It would just be helpful for you. Again, this is not going to take your pool from a, a lovely you know green to a blue by any means. But the cool thing about this is there's next to no maintenance to it, um, and it it provides a sanitizer to your pool. It's not the sanitizer. That that means it's not the primary sanitizer like a chlorinator or tablets. But it helps break down the the uh, uh, bacteria and pathogens, and it just makes for a more sanitized pool. Simple. Um, for your salt people, I want to give you a little something. I don't have too many of these, so I'm going to make you pick a number from 1 to 20, right? I'll start from the top left. This won't help you guys, so I'm sorry, but this is a cool little salt cleaning stand. If you have one, don't play the game. If you, if you don't have one, then play the game. So uh, you have a salt system. Give me a number from 1 to 20. 13. 13. Okay, so you got 13. Um, so you're, you're two are together. Go ahead, bud. You're in the back. Just 1 to 20. Give me a number. I don't have salt. You don't have salt. Well, we don't got to worry about that then. You have tabs. You have salt. 1 to 20. 10. You got 13 in the back. 10 up here. You're together? 14. 14. 4. Okay. Oh, you're non salt. Your salt. Give me a number one to twenty. Thirteen. We got two thirteens. So you win one because that's number three. So we got three more. So you've got fourteen, right? Your four. Your two. Are, you're thirteen. You three are fourteen. You're you're ten, and you're fourteen. So you get one. So this is number nine. So I pass that back. So we got two more. And you got 14, and who else? We got 13? 13, 14, 13. 
two 13s and a 14. All right, I'll tell you what. You get one here, and then give me two numbers between you two, 1 through 20. The closest gets it. Seven is that. Oh, you hotballed you there. Listen, I know, I know it's not much, but, you know, they're cool little stands. Uh, it'll help you clean your cell. What it does is basically spins on the actual cell itself, so that way you don't have to put the cell in a bucket of acid. You actually spin it on the cell. You take your acid water, fill just the cell itself. So that way it maintains everything inside the cell and it doesn't get everything wet. Cool little feature. Again, I wish I could give everybody something, but uh, sorry I couldn't give everybody something. Um, any more questions? You have anything for me to go back over with you? Does your adjustment get ball cell, like the lower it? Yeah. Can you do that from here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Easy. You go right in your IntelliClore and you tap that and you've got the percentage up and down and you can make the so adjustments. Like you were showing me yep. Um, everybody, does you guys all know about the Screen Logic? Anybody not know about Screen Logic? So what Screen Logic is? It's an iPhone uh, database now that you can run your pool schedule-wise, adjust your chlorine levels, turn your pumps and lights on from anywhere in the world. Really cool feature. Um, they work pretty well. I've I've had very little problems with mine. Uh, I like it just for the simple and the ease of adjusting your schedules. You know, instead of going to the control panel and pressing menu and select, you simply go to your schedule panel, press the button, and it almost operates just like an alarm clock. It's a really, really cool feature. And then you can make your adjustments, especially for you spa. You know what I mean? It's kind of nice to have the spa going after a ball game or something, and you just get home and jump right in. I love that. I love that. So there's some cool features having Screen Logic. Again, I'm kind of bouncing around, but I just kind of want to let you know Screen Logic's really cool. And... Uh, it's a lot easier to make adjustments. Um, if, if you do have Screen Logic and you're interested in adjusting your pump speeds, uh, there's another app and it's called Screen Logic Configuration. And you will be able to go on and completely adjust the RPM of the pump uh, by using this app. It's a secondary app. Um, so if, if you're interested in adjusting the pump speeds from your phone, it's the uh, Screen Logic Configuration app. It'll automatically update. But, I mean, it's still not what do you mean? So you can't turn something like, on or off? Like yeah. So that, um, where I go to pull low, it's still going to be red or green. Blue or black. Yeah. That's probably just because they've updated colors, but when you press the button, does it go green? Yeah, it's just a different color tab. They'll change that. Yeah, it should update it right away. So what I would recommend when you get home, kill the router, unplug the router, and unplug the screen logic, power them both back up, and let them re-pull in the screen logic. Sometimes, you know, electronics, they'll get a little funky. Um, I've had I had one problem with my screen logic and it was just not connecting and you know all I did is yeah pull a router unplug the screen logic yeah it's gonna kill your internet for a minute but you know what here's a thing I learned about routers you would think a router lasts a lifetime but you want to change your routers every couple of years you want to get a better router you know each yeah not saying not saying it's your router I'm just saying they they, they recommend replacing your router every couple years. Um, but yeah, reboot the router, reboot the screen logic, see if it comes back up like normal. If not, get with us. I'll get you my phone card, you know, my number, and uh, we'll get out there and take a look. Yeah, yeah, all right. But yeah, we want to make sure it works. But honestly, overall, I mean, electronics are electronics. You know, something's going to go wrong at some time. But they've had a pretty damn good uh, history of working pretty well. Like, I've had next to no trouble. So it's, they've been working really well. And it's cool. It's a cool little feature. I mean, yeah, good, good, good. But yeah, um, on the on the download on your computer, um, you know, I would just try to. You can obviously right click and delete it. Um, if it's a Mac, it's a little different. If it's a PC, just recycle and then clean your recycle basket. Go back in the pool, uh, Pentair.com, and then just reload that software. Yep. 
it's a little tricky, but if you go through it, you'll you'll figure it out. It'll say automation, but I could walk you right through it online too. But yeah, you just re-download that software, and then once it uploads again, you'll have that new revision. But overall, my screen logic is a couple years old, and I get everything new. I, there's nothing that I don't have that you guys have that's a month old, in other words. So it it stays updated. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Any questions? Anything else I can go back over with you? Um, one thing really quick. We do have a water testing system now we, at my front office here. We test water for you. We'd love to help you guys out. We have some really basic chemistry uh, chemicals. We have phosphate removers, liquids. Um, so overall, we want to help you guys out. So if you guys have any questions, you know, uh, if you have a good, good pool supply store, stay with them. And if you trust them and they're, you know, if they're directing you the right way, stick with them. If not, get with us and let us try to help you out and, and balance things out. But biggest thing is enjoy your pool. You know what I mean? Don't be a slave to your pool. Enjoy it. That's why we all bought it. Um, but from me to you, the more you can test, the better. And it'll just make the water just that much better for you. So, all right. Thanks for being here. Really, really appreciate you guys. Enjoy your weekend. And, um, we won't be doing this next until next year, unfortunately. So we get a couple months off. And uh, but if you guys have any questions, you need anything, call us. We'll be happy to help you guys out. Thank you. Fifty-two degrees. Yeah. Once the water gets to fifty-two degrees, you'll actually get a red light, and it'll say cold water on the actual cell. Yeah, you can, or use just a little bit of liquid. Yeah. That'll work great. Until, until yeah, until it starts working again. Or you could just leave it completely out. Yeah, let me get you some. Come on down. We all right? We're all good? Do we have any questions online? You got them all? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're steering you right, then, you know, that's that's good. That's all you need. Well, you guys are so...